Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. For this video, I realise I'm a bit off-centre. I'm usually somewhere around here, but the reason why I'm not is, uh, it's fairly obvious. Anyway, we do have some cool hardware on display. Uh, you'll notice that the GTX 1070 Ti is back. Last week, NVIDIA did announce this graphics card. We can't show benchmarks yet, but it has finally been officially announced, and it's a graphics card based on the comments that I saw in my unboxing and teardown video that many of you thought wasn't real. Anyway, the GTX 1070 Ti is very real, and you can now pre-order it. NVIDIA and their board partners are happy to take your money. They're starting at around $450 US and they are available at major online retailers. Uh, the release date is next week though and unfortunately I cannot show you any benchmark data before then so yeah this is another teaser. However uh, for this one we are building my new GPU test system. I think that's going to be a bit special and that will be based on Intel's new 8th gen core series of course because while Potentially not the best value, they are the best gaming CPUs, especially the 8700K, it's a bit of a weapon, uh, but I'm not really here to debate that today. We are putting together the ultimate, what I think is the ultimate uh, GPU test rig, but we're going to go about it a little bit differently, we're not going to just slap in the 8700K straight away. Having had a look at the specs now and the pricing of the 1070 Ti, I think that's going to be a pretty, it's going to be in a sweet spot in terms of value for gamers, a bit like the Core i5-8400, I thought pairing those two together, that could be a really, really nice combo. Basically, for those of you who aren't up to speed yet, we are really expecting GTX 1080 Lite performance from the 1070 Ti. Uh, it does have just 5% fewer CUDA cores, so there's not a lot in it. Uh, the only real big discrepancy is the memory bandwidth, but even so, we're not expecting the 1070 Ti to trail the 1080 by that much. Speaking of products that you can order and throw some money at, but you can't actually get your hands on yet. How about the Intel Core i5-8400? I know that's got a few of you a bit riled up. You want to just buy one because you've seen the benchmark results, but yeah, unfortunately not to be just yet. It was a bit of a soft launch, that one. Uh, I will be testing the Core i5-8400 against the overclocked Ryzen 5 1600. I haven't forgot about that. I know you guys want to see that, and that will be on the channel in the next day or two. Actually, there'll be a video about that tomorrow, then I think the benchmark video will be the next day. Uh, but yeah, stay tuned, that is coming up. Uh, either way though, the 8400 is a very impressive CPU, and if you can get it for the MSRP, which is less than $200 US, it's an exceptionally good buy. Right now though, at the $260-ish dollars that I've been seeing it at places like Newegg and Amazon, uh, it's a bit of a hard pass right now. Anyway, assuming that next week the Core i5-8400 returns to supply, bit of a long shot that one, and the GTX 1070 Ti doesn't sell out in like 6 seconds, which seems to be the way GPU releases go these days, then those two would be, uh, in my opinion, the perfect pairing, having not fully tested this yet, just assuming based on the specs. But yeah, I don't think we're too far off the mark there. Um, but yeah, for now, I'm going to assume that they are going to be the perfect pairing, and I'm going to put them in my new Corsair test system. As was the case with my Skylake Ryzen and KB Lake test system builds, Corsair has again supplied uh, the bulk of the components for my new Coffee Lake rig. On hand today, we have for the build the new white version of the Crystal Series 570X. And I did use for the previous two builds, the, whoops, nearly knocked that off the table, uh, the black version of this case. Very impressed with it, so I'm quite excited to check out the new white model. Complementing the white case will be Corsair's RMX RM750X, 750 watt, 80 plus gold certified, fully modular power supply. Whew, it's a nice power supply and it's white. Um, yeah, I suppose apart from it being white, it does have 100% uh, Japanese capacitors, does have white sleeved cables, and a very cool thing is it does have a 10 year warranty, so that's pretty huge. In keeping with the white theme, we also have the new Vengeance RGB memory, and I say new because I believe the white version is very new, and Corsair shot over a 32 gigabyte kit, so that'll do nicely. It's DDR4 3000 stuff. Um, yet to play around with the RGB memory from Corsair, but I have seen it on display at a few trade shows and events, and I have to say it looks quite special. 
Then the final Corsair item on the menu is the tried and true Hydro Series H100 IV2. I've used this guy in over half a dozen builds now. It's yet to let me down. It's a really good quality cooler. I like the 240mm radiator. It's, it's fairly well priced as well for a high-end all-in-one liquid cooler. Um, it is... It is overkill for the 8400, I'll admit, but when I do inevitably swap in the 8700K for my GPU testing down the track, this thing will no doubt come in very handy. Now, a key component of this build that I'm yet to talk about is Gigabyte's Z370 Aorus Gaming 7 motherboard. This is a well-stocked and incredibly good-looking Z370 board, and it is priced below $300 US, so that makes it a very solid choice, even for those that are looking for something like a locked Core i5-8400, as it it does offer a flexible upgrade path in the future to something like the 8700K or perhaps even something better in the future. So enough waffling on from me. I've talked about all the components. We've checked them out. I'm excited to put the build together. So let's queue up a smooth tune and get building.
Now that is a sweet looking test rig. Probably, I'd say, my most impressive yet. I came away pretty impressed earlier this year with the KB Lake, and that was a black-blue kind of build, and yeah, that looked really good. Then the Ryzen version, which was obviously kind of an orangey, reddish rig, that looked good as well. But I think this white-black version with the RGB lighting, which I've currently got sort of set to a red at the moment, I think this one takes the cake. Later today, I will temporarily swap out the GTX 1070 Ti and install the Vega 64 liquid cool graphics card, and that will be to finish that overclocked Ryzen 5 1600 versus Core i5 8400 comparison that all you guys keep hassling me to get done. Uh, but then I will put the 1070 Ti back in there because I will be testing a couple of new games like Assassin's Creed Origins and Wolfenstein 2, the new Colossus for the GTX 1070 Ti review, which will be coming later in the week. Uh, there's certainly a lot of testing to be done, so it's right to work with this brand new test system. I'm your host, Steve. I'll see you again soon, guys.